Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. Real Estate Coaching Radio is the nation's number one daily radio show for realtors who demand authentic real-time coaching. Get ready for fluff-free, unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what's truly working to get you into action, helping others, and making money now in today's real estate market. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one. Okay, we are back. It is June the 11th. Um, I feel compelled, uh, and Julie and I talked about this on our daily six mile walk Mm -hmm. yesterday, and I'm, I, we have, we do our best to absolutely never be political. We're, you know, we're trying to be a role model for you guys on how it's really not appropriate as a real estate professional in our opinions to be partisan on any side because you're always going to alienate somebody, right? No matter how well-intentioned your feelings and your beliefs are, and I'm not questioning any of that. What I'm suggesting is it's always best to just not really participate in any conversations that might offend somebody. Yeah, just take the high road. Right, because it, it's not your place. It's not my right. place, really. I mean, if you if you think of it like, like this, guys, this is how it maybe should be the rule, right? If you go to your doctor's office and your doctor all of a sudden when you're there to you know have your ingrown toenail looked at or whatever, right? If the doctor starts basically spouting off about politics or spouting off about, you know, things that are modern topics and events and social things that are going on, and you're not in agreement with whatever your doctor's stance is, what is your opinion of that doctor? I mean, you're automatically, even if this was the best doctor ever, the very fact that the doctor didn't share your beliefs, your chances are you're not going to like that doctor, let alone go back again. Right. And, you know, and there's so, it goes so much deeper than that. So maybe you're not even remotely introspective and maybe you're not able to like remove the idea of this guy's a great professional, even though he might be a little bit of a jerk with his opinions on, you know, whatever cause it is that isn't in alignment with yours. Well, you might actually take that as an affront or an insult and you might then take it to the next level and you might find yourself on Yelp typing a bad review about his services, not because his services themselves were bad, but because of the fact that he didn't hold the same beliefs that you and hold. And you felt in conflict with that. Right. You know, and I think even beyond that, to have a stance at all about something that's not in your wheelhouse, even if they are on the same side as you politically, if they bring something up and you don't know that much about it, or you bring it up and they don't know much about it, you could be making them to feel stupid or competitive or insulted inadvertently. It's just not really your place to be having those conversations. Your job is to help people buy and sell real estate. That's why they come to you. That's what they trust you to do. And it, it's not that we don't want you to be compassionate and have feelings about this. It's just that it's not a business conversation. It isn't. And I hope you guys are understanding where we're coming from, because really at the end of the day, what real estate truly is about, what any service you know business is about, just like that doctor, it's a being of service to other people. It's helping other people and helping people solve their problem. And maybe the doctor's fixing your ingrown toenail, you know, he's solving that problem for you. And for you, it's obviously helping people through these very challenging times emotionally to transact. I mean, that is your job. Yes. That is what you're supposed to do. And that's what they're expecting you to do. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to tell you it's okay not to participate in politics. It's okay not to have politicized conversations with, uh, with people. It's okay to, you know, you don't have to fly any particular flag. You don't have to. And maybe for the sake of what your highest and truest purpose on this planet is, which is being of service to other people, it's best if you don't fly any particular flag. So again, we're just... And by not doing that, that doesn't mean that because you didn't do it, that you support or don't support something. It just means that you are opting out. Right. There's there's no winning right now with what's going on. And and that's that's your ego, right? So... It's a very interesting time for, um, you know, Julie and I, for having studied this, why people do and think the way they do and the actions that they do or don't take. And what's fascinating to me is that so many people feel compelled because of social networking to voice their opinions. Um, And I personally don't feel that way. And I don't, I understand why other people feel that way. But if you, you have to stop and ask yourself, why is it that you feel compelled to voice your opinion? 
And, uh, I mean, publicly, in such a and in such a way that you could attract ridicule to yourself. Why is it that you feel compelled to do that? I think they're feeling a lot of pressure. Me too. All around. This is why you and I talked about this yesterday. Why we felt it was appropriate to bring it up, because none of this is in our wheelhouse either. We're right. business coaches, right? But because you're feeling so much pressure, you know, you have things from. You know, businesses that you buy things from in your email are putting banners and, and opinions out and surveys and, you know, all of this. And, of course, some of your clients might be bringing it up with you. And you turn on the news and you hear it. It's on the radio. It's all around you. That doesn't mean that you have to participate. Just because that's what's out in the ethos, your job, you know, if you want to have a banner on your website or on your Facebook, it should be about super low interest rates and, you know, your, your greatest new listing that you've got and how you can help people. And if you feel really compelled to basically contribute to society, if you're just, you know, you have this desire to help people because maybe you're having, maybe your business is going great. Maybe your finances are going great. Maybe despite all these headwinds that so many other people are experiencing in their lives, you're not experiencing those headwinds and maybe you're feeling a little guilty. I mean, that's the case with a lot of you, I, so. I know. And so what we're giving you permission to do is then go out and make a contribution towards maybe the Humane Society. Yeah. Go, go out and, and maybe donate money to a food shelter. There is a lot of places that you can help without allowing your, yourself to become politicized. Because when you assume a stance, when you assume a, an opinion um, and, and no, on either side, and again, we're absolutely not uh, offering what our own opinions are. We never will on this on this podcast, right? Because they're irrelevant. What Julie right. and I think or believe about these different political things, it, it, they're irrelevant, truthfully, because our it's not in alignment. Us sharing our personal beliefs and all that stuff has nothing to do whatsoever with what our highest and truest purpose is of, yep. of being a service to you guys. But if you do feel compelled to contribute, then go contribute, but do it in an apolitical way. Do it in such a way that you're not going to be making enemies. And that's what everyone seems to be on guard about right now mm -hmm. is like, oh my gosh, what are you thinking? What do you think? I mean, Julie mentioned these emails. I got, I'm getting people that are sending out these long-winded emails about just whatever their stances are. And it's like, I mean, one of them was a, um, uh, a company that sells kids' toys. Mm -hmm. No, no, it was kids' chocolates, right, or something. Yeah. I don't remember. But this long-winded uh, like, thing, uh, blah, uh, blah, blah. You know blah. what I always think? I'm like, how is it that they think that we care about what that opinion is? Well, we care about them right. cranking out a good product and delivering it on That's time. That's it. I mean, they're feeling pressure to basically right. do that. And, you know, anyway, guys, I want you to give yourselves permission, yes, to contribute if you are in the position to do so, but just do it in such a way that you're not going to make enemies along the way. Because when you do, you will uh, remove, you know, maybe 50% of the folks yeah. that otherwise would have done business well, with you. Well, that's true, because for every one person that says, right on, I believe, right there with you, there's at least one person saying, delete, that's not right. interested, but you wouldn't know it. Because they just disappear on you. A lifetime delete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just be careful about that, guys. And we know there's a lot of pressure out there, but don't feel like you have to participate. Again, just be clear, though. You can be compassionate. You can feel the, you know, absolutely. There's there's a great saying, and, um, you know, we learned this a long time from Rory, our original broker, right? Mm -hmm. We had this wonderful seller, just the lady salt of the earth. And she was a doctor at... I forget where, and just a wonderful, you know, everything. But this condo that she'd bought, which we didn't sell to her, she <laughs> I know bought exactly the one you're referring to, and we haven't talked about this in years. Hazel. Yep. Yep. And she had this Mirror beautiful field. condo. We thought it was awesome. And I, you know, actually, it's somewhat relevant too. She was a um, a black lady. The she had pictures of her family up in the uh, condo, and it was a super cool condo. Too. It was. It was awesome. Yeah. And we'd known we'd known Hazel from our previous business. This is back when her early twenties, because she was one of our favorite car cleaning and detailing customers when Julie and I yep. owned our car cleaning and detailing That's business. Funny. And she always sent us business and she just was a, such a classy lady. We became mm -hmm. friends with her. Mm -hmm. So when we got our real estate licenses, um, she had this condo that had been on and off the market forever. And the last listing agent had basically told her that the reason it didn't sell is because she had her own family's pictures up and the people that were in that particular... you remember this? Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, I, was, I mean, I was shocked that she'd said something like that. I was too. It was. I mean, how is that? Yeah, how is I mean, it even I'm, remotely appropriate? No. No, it was not even remotely appropriate. But here's the reason we're telling you this story: is because she had, in order to sell this condo, though her previous listing agent had been the one to sell it to her. So, and it was in actually in that Muirfield area we told you guys about yesterday. So she had a uh, she'd overpaid. Basically, long story short, um, she paid a, a good bit of it with cash. Put like fifty percent down. Um, and she was upside down on this place. Wasn't by a quarter million dollars. I think that she had kind of overinvested on the rehab too. 
if I recall correctly. Yeah, but wasn't it like 250 grand yeah, that yeah, she was? Yeah, so right. she had, in order to get rid of this property, because she didn't want to like do a short sale, she had to bring money to closing. And that was an outrageous amount of money to closing. And she was, I, I felt terrible about it. And to the point where it was almost impossible for us to do our jobs because it was so emotionally draining to have conversations where you have to tell someone that you actually kind of loved that you that she's going to have to experience this yeah. financial hardship. Now, we didn't we didn't sign ourselves up for it. We didn't put her no. in that position and none of those things. But the fact is, is we're the ones who are having to tell her the bad news. And she was really emotionally distraught about it. I mean, who wouldn't? Remember, this is back in the 90s. That was, it's real money now, but that was really real money back yeah, then. Maybe it wasn't a quarter million, but it was it a was lot. It was probably the equivalent of today, yeah. even if it wasn't. Right. And I remember too, wasn't she, I know she was a doctor, but wasn't she also doing this to like go join the Peace Corps as a yeah, doctor or something? That's right. So it was like... You know, you couldn't have had a sweeter, nicer, I've forgotten that. smarter lady. Yeah. So she actually, she was an executive. She wasn't a, you know, a physician. She was an executive at a research company. You're right. And she did, was quitting that job so she could go join the Peace Corps. All that is true. <laughs> so on so, top of that, she has to bring all this money to close. You guys get the idea here, right? Ridiculous. So it was so hard for us. We are new in real estate. This is one of the transactions we did our first year, if I remember correctly. Yep. It was so sad. But Rory told us something that because Julie and I went to him and said, Rory, we are, what the hell? Well, how are we going to help her to accept the contract or accept the fact that she only can, you know, the market is only going to give her what the market's going to give her, you know? And uh, he said this, he said, show emotion without being emotional. And we're like, what does that mean? He never really explained things. Rory would drop these little, you He'd know. he give me one sentence coaching and then <laughs> Walk away. Off. Yeah. He, but he dropped these little knowledge bombs on us, basically. <laughs> That's exactly what that, it was. That rattled around in our brains. We had to, it's like one of Zoe's little riddles that she's torturing me with lately. But anyway, so he dropped these little knowledge bombs and then Julie and I thought about it and thought about it. And we understood what he was saying. We didn't want to, uh, we were compassionate, but for us to be emotionally involved in her transaction, we would have lost our objectivity. We had lost the ability to tell her the truth. We would have lost our ability to tell her, essentially do what we didn't want to do and we didn't want to do at the highest level. Now we did tell her the truth. She was emotionally upset about it. She did end up losing a lot of money. But that showing emotion without being emotional lesson was something that has worked for us our entire lives. Because what he was really saying is what we just said to you about that doctor. You've got to be the professional. And sometimes being the professional means you have to say and do things that is in the best interest of your client, but they don't necessarily want to hear, yeah. you know, or pull in a really... Uh, well, I was going to pull in a Jane, Dr. Jane, or a Captain Janeway from well, Star I Wars. I that because Star I'm your Trek. captain. I can't always be your friend. Yeah. I mean, it's the same lines as those. And, you know, it's interesting. We talk a lot about, you know, getting into action so you can say, hey, thank you, Pastor Tim and Julie, for having it together. Or fill in your name, right? But, I, you know, we do say thank you, past knowledge bombs from Rory from time to time. We certainly used all of that during when we have to deal with our own short sale sales and through the last recession and coaching calls. And you never really know what little knowledge bomb is going to be set off. And I, I just, you know, I, I feel so grateful when coaching clients throw some of those back at us that they've heard us say on I know, podcasts. Me too. I think it's awesome. But I think, you know, the, the point is that you can be compassionate without being dramatic about it, without being political about it. You can still have those feelings. It's how you go about it that matters. So and, all- and I think it shows class. I think it shows wisdom. I think it shows professionalism. And I think it, it shows that you, it's not that you're necessarily above it all, but in a sense, you're kind of like not playing that political game. If, you know, so for all of you agents out there and brokers and business owners in general, is that me or is that you? That's you. Oh, that is obnoxious. I turned my phone off too. Anyway, so for all of you guys who are out there who basically are com- feeling compelled to be socially involved, who are feeling compelled to come out with social messaging or all this other stuff, I want, you, I want to give you permission to not do that. I want to give you permission to absolutely positively not participate in, um, in, in any of that. You don't have to come out with it. Can you just toss this out of here? I don't know how to turn it <laughs> it's off. too much technology in one place. <laughs> my my yes. headset won't stop ringing, and I'm literally not knowing how to turn it off. And I'm, I'm about two seconds away from stopping on it. And it was $300. Yeah, I know. Exactly. So, yes. I mean, there, there it is. So, give yourself permission to you know, be a professional, to rise above it, to not necessarily throw down with one side or the other, and that's okay. And matter of fact, that's the way that you should do it. In our opinions, um, 
in order to be professional and to be of service to most people. Otherwise, your world's just going to get smaller and smaller. And there's something in real estate and there's something in life called being versatile. And to be versatile basically means that you have the ability to work with many different people, you know, regardless of any aspect of them that makes them unique. And just to stay timely, their race, their skin color, their sexual preferences or orientation, their education level, political views, their political views, up, what church they go to. Exactly. I mean, the list the list is so long that you're never going to win at all of that. You're never going to keep everybody happy. Right. So don't you know? throw down with anybody. That's the moral of the story. Be yeah. the professional. Be the best version of yourself as a real estate professional. And don't be partisan. It just isn't worth it. And I yeah. trust me, guys, we are being... In some cases, overtly told to you know show our you know political sure. leanings this way or that way. I have probably personally lost this year at least maybe two personal coaching clients because of the fact that um, we, frankly, Julie and I won't be we won't appear overly this way or that way. Yeah. And they maybe they wanted us to appear this way or that way, and we wouldn't, and so they took offense to it, or they thought, well, you know, you're not in the same you're not in the same camp as I am, or you're not yeah. under the same tent as I am. So that means I'm going to, you know, I get it. I We probably have sure. lost some business because of the fact that we're taking this stance and being apolitical so we can be of service to many people as we possibly can. But that's okay. They weren't, you know, frankly, there may be customers worth losing, yeah. you know, because we're not going to ever act that way. You know, it was Jeff Bezos actually over last weekend that received some <laughs> email. This made it into the news. It was fascinating. And the email was horrible. Some absolutely, you know, fringe, probably right wing crazy guy talking about racism and just all this stuff. It was just unhinged. He said it to the world's wealthiest man, which I was like, what the hell? I guess he direct messaged him on um, Instagram. I don't even know what, which in my mind thinks, does Jeff Bezos really read his social networking? Do we, did that really? There's so many leaps here that this guy thought that this was okay. But anyway, so I imagine he thought no one would ever read it, let alone respond. So Bezos then responds and basically said, you're, you know, you're the kind of customer I don't mind losing. And I think that was actually the right response. It was short. It was not particularly political and it it cut to the point. So there it is. That's, that's our whole, you know, we're rounding the bend on that particular topic because I know a lot of you guys are feeling, you know, pulled in different directions. Mm -hmm. Maybe think about taking that stance because frankly, it'll lessen the stress on you and you'll be able to help more people. All right. So headlines from the news. Yes. And remember, we have a call coming up shortly in about 15 minutes. Okay. So uh, back to what should actually affect you. Treasury Secretary Mnuchin says we can't shut down the economy again. This is from CNBC. He said, shutting down the economy for a second time to slow COVID-19 is not a viable option. Um, His comments come as Wall Street grew more concerned about a second wave of coronavirus cases. He said he's prepared to return to Congress to request additional fiscal spending to help juice the economy if needed. So that that's, you know, speaking to what a lot of people are wondering about if there is a, a second wave, you know, I mean, you and I have, have wondered together, uh, are people actually going to comply with something like that? And he's saying, look, we're just we can't afford to do that. Right. So, so I think, um, you know, that's something that I will frankly gives me um I like that. It makes me feel comfortable. Yeah. I'm glad that we can remove from the table the idea that there's going to be some sort of forced national quarantine again. Um, and also, there's well, some... uncertainty on its own is bad for the market. Right. You know, waiting exactly. for the other shoe to drop makes people nervous. And generally, when people are uncertain, they do nothing, which right. is bad for everyone. And I mean, again, we Julie and I have not spent any time really on this podcast talking about coronavirus because everyone else is and. It's too much work to try to become an expert at something that we never even have time to, you know, even come close to being an expert at. So our suggestion to all of you is that you essentially remember what we were sharing with you a second ago. Stay, you know, don't get political about it because the coronavirus thing is definitely becoming political. So even if the government, federal government says we're not going to be doing any national shutdowns if there is a, you know, notable recurrence of the coronavirus, which probably there will be, that's not to say the states won't. I mean, the right. state governors can say, I bet you here in Puerto Rico. Absolutely. In two seconds, if there's any. Well, now, look, we live on an island that's basically. International ports, international airport. You it's, know? It's, cl- it's easier for us to fly to Africa from here than it is <laughs> right. to, you know. It's, but the reality of it is, is that I totally get it. You know, in, in our island there, if there's any fear of it being um, recurring, they'll shut it down. And Absolutely. I get it because this island's isolated. We have to, you know, but if you're in the middle of the country and you have, you're surrounded by first class yeah. medical systems 
systems and sure. care and, and your governor still decides to shut it down, well, these are interesting things. They're going to have an interesting effect on um, home home prices. In, in some parts of the country, we talked about this yesterday, there's going to be an increase in migration away from the cities and, the and, and frankly, the states that have maybe in some people's minds proven to be a little bit overreaching with regards to, you know, the quarantining and businesses. And, you know, Elon Musk is moving out of California because his own, his business, because he didn't like the way California handled itself and essentially shutting his business down. And you know, people have options. Yeah. Again. All right. So next headline. Okay. So the next thing is purchase mortgage applications continue to rise for the eighth straight week. Now, the thing that I want people to pay attention, and this is, again, one of the Diana Olick reports. This was a video, so there's not a lot of text there, but I did watch it. Um, she was talking about how, you know, it's one thing to say that it, it's an increase in mortgage applications since the lockdown. Okay, so any percent is going to be more than a, a serious dip or zero applications, right? What she's saying is now that we're into the eighth straight week, they're actually up 13 percent year over year which kind of erases the whole, you know, like the COVID impact is not as big. Year over year, we're up 13%. So that's good. There's tons of interest. And our coaching clients will attest to that because they are still getting, uh, in many cases, multiple offers. So uh, let's see. The next one is uh, interesting. This I put into the category of what is actually happening out there and how much do they actually still not know about the virus? Um, Missouri hairstylists, Corona, uh, let's see, there were two hairstylists who had coronavirus. They saw between them 140 clients, but no new infections have been linked to the salon. So, you know, this is like one day you read that the asymptomatic people are not communicable. And then the next day there's an outbreak somewhere. And, you know, I just think that this is. Well, but here's the reason we're sharing these headlines with you, yeah. because uh, it was widely believed that there couldn't be a return to any kind of stability in the uh, economy until there was a uh, approvable therapy or a vaccine. Mm -hmm. But now there's a third option emerging. Maybe, <laughs> you know, like in some, like was it Sweden? Uh -huh. they, they had no quarantine, they had no shutdown. They did the whole herd immunity thing. Mm -hmm. So maybe the next, uh, if this thing comes back, which maybe it will, maybe it won't, but if it does, what we might see instead is we might see essentially without a therapy or without a vaccine, People are not going to shut down. Maybe some people will self-quarantine. They're going to have to live with it. They're going to have to live with it. You get it, you get it. And, you know, if you're older and you're more uh, susceptible to having some, you know, dying from this thing, then maybe that's you're where you're going to you, you're gonna have to be more cautious. You know, we've learned a lot in the past six months and we've learned that it does not affect everyone equally. So it, it does appear that we no longer, well, possibly, we no longer mm -hmm. going to have to wait for the uh, almost impossible to accomplish goals of either a viable therapy or a vaccine. Now, that's good news because if there is indeed not going to be some sort of waiting for the other shoe to drop, whether there's going to be a second wave or not, you know, people then can start taking a breath and then we can start having a return to a viable economy. And then maybe we can start taking a second look at yeah. maybe some of the restrictions that were put in place that is going to be if we do if the if the essentially if that's the direction that the conversation starts to go i think we're really going to see what julie and i are hoping for the second half of 2020 being all about the miracles of the you know essentially the recovery of everything yeah. and cautiously we're, optimistic for it, sure i mean i'm super excited about that yeah definitely i mean i it's all about timing right so how is all this going to play out as people's uh you know the all the stimulus stuff kind of winds its way out. We're still a few months away from that. You know, I, I think it's all about timing this year. I really do. So we have to get ready for a call. Do you want to do things we love and things we hate? <laughs> You're do ready for it. I, I think I only have things I love, which is Zoe's uh, daily torture of you with her riddles. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. I'm terrible at riddles. Uh, I'll throw one out. We try to keep them one sentence so she can remember them. What has a stem but no roots? Remember that one? Oh yeah, a wine glass. But, yes, but I didn't. I'll t so that uh, and her. So today it's. Uh, I am constantly moving, but I'm always at home. What am I? And the answer is a snail. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that good? She loves these. I have. So. Uh, let me tell you one I love too. Yeah. All right, so the thing I love is today, so we, you guys may or may not, I mean, why would you know this? But we have a, a six-month-old French bulldog 
who we were told his the box he came in the package said he will grow to maybe 28 or 30 pounds yeah well this guy's turning out to be today heavy, is his six month birthday by the way yeah he's turning out to be a heavy eddie he's already what 32, 32 pounds? pounds 32 I mean, pounds and he's tall and he's thick he's just you walked him today he's like walking a baby oxen yeah my right arm's longer than my left arm yeah but he likes to play he's a puppy and he's hilarious and he's bad he's mischievous he's He's not quite as mischievous as Zoe, but he's close. Yeah. But one of the things I, I walked into uh, the kitchen today, and I took a little video of this, I haven't sent oh. it to you yet, to get um, a cup of coffee. And Zoe was reading Max the story about, I don't remember what it was. It was some it was a Muppet story. It was Kermit. Yeah, it was about yeah. Kermit. Yeah. yeah. She read him this whole book. And she didn't know I was watching, but Zoe was sitting there in a chair reading to Max this Kermit uh, book. And A, she's, you know, six and a half, and she was really kicking butt reading that book. I mean, she slowed down, yeah. sound spelled, and got things worked out, and actually, you know, she's was reading good. with some, you know, style. Yeah. And what was really cute is that she was reading to him, and he was absolutely listening to her. That's awesome. He was just sitting there with his big brown eyes, just staring at her as she was reading, That's and just listening. Cool. I thought, wow, that is really beautiful. You know, here she is. She doesn't have any siblings, so that is her, you know, little brother. It's her brother. And she's actually treating him like that. Yeah. And we Very still sweet. And we we keep telling Zoe that he's going to actually weigh more than her soon if she doesn't well, they're only within five pounds of each other right now so <laughs> i can't believe she can still carry him because he if you stretch him out he actually is just about as tall as her i know so that, that's a good thing you love anything like you that. hate um you know i mean i i hate what well, we talked about at the top you know these guys feeling pressure to do stuff that's out of their wheelhouse i i kind of hate that because it anything that takes them away from taking care of themselves and their family and their clients i hate but you know that's, that's basically where I'm I can tell you that. something else I love. Do we have time? Yeah, we do. Yeah. I was on, um, I actually can't say where I have this information, but, um, well, maybe I can. I was on a, a, a private meeting this morning, and I was learning about the growth trends for the largest brokerages, I haven't told you this yet either, mm-hmm. in the country. And I was shocked about the difference between EXP Realty and the other um, major companies. I actually have these numbers. I have time I, to share. Um, you shared, yeah. I saw I some of this, this on uh, Libertas. Yeah, yeah, on Libertas. But here, here's some numbers it, for you I guys. thought that was quite shocking as well. I couldn't even believe it. Yeah. So so here's some numbers for you guys. Now, I just want to share this with you because this is an example. Remember, we were talking to you guys a month or so ago that there's certain types of businesses that will uh, flourish in times of change and the greatest fortunes and humanity have always been made during the greatest times of change. Here's a perfect example. I mean, everyone talks about Zoom and people talk about these different technology companies. Okay, listen to this. All right, so in the this is from April to April. Um, this isn't these aren't my numbers. I got this from somebody else who then took it from the public filings because these companies are all publicly traded. So just take this with a grain of salt. You know, I didn't research this myself. Normally, Julie and I don't tell you guys about anything unless we've researched it ourselves. So let me mute that. Yep. Okay, so first of all, um, Home Services, which owns a whole bunch of brands, like a ton of real estate brands. I don't remember if Home Services owns, you know, Prudential and Coldwell Banker, but you guys get the idea. In the last uh, 12 months, from April of 2019 to April of 2020, they grew agent count by 2%. That's that's better than not growing agent count, right? So Realogy, which you guys have all heard of, has grown agent count by 4%. 4% better than 2%. Okay, that's, you know, it's again, not going the, it's not going negative. Remax, now this was something I was really interested in, as you guys may or may not know, Julie and I were Remax agents for 10 years, basically. Um, so Remax in the United States between April and April netted, in other words, they only added after attrition, after agents quitting, a total of four agents. And that's in a year. Remax only added domestically in that's the United amazing. States. A total of four agents. Now, internationally, they supposedly added something like 6,000 agents. Now, here's an, another statistic that I got from that um, session this morning. So, uh, Keller Williams uh, publicly stated that grew by 12%. But evidently, there's an internal memo. Again, I didn't see this. It's basically, you guys should just take this as gossip because I didn't see this information myself. But evidently, there's an internal memo where they admit that the actual... Um, Losses, in other words, they shrunk agent count by 36.9% in that same time frame of basically a year. That's kind of amazing to think about. Now, in that same time frame, EXP grew by 64%. 
So last year, EXP basically grew by from 15,000 to something like 30,000. Maybe it was like 14,000 mm -hmm. to 30,000. And they're on, that, they're on track this month alone to add well up between 1,000 and 2,000 agents. That's mm -hmm. incredible. Being part of that company as they continue to grow really does give me the exact feeling of being in the right place at the right time. Yes. If you guys want to have a conversation with me about – you have two paths to learn more about EXP. If you're just getting ready and wanting to learn a little bit – Here's all you have to do. Just text the word EXP to 31996. If you want to have a conversation with me more urgently and you want to join EXP, you're just looking for the right person to sponsor you and you haven't committed to anybody, please feel free to text me directly at 512-758-0206 and we'll have the conversation and uh, yeah, we'll help you move forward with EXP. We are absolutely excited with our alignment with the company because I, truthfully, I could not have imagined a better company to be in business with during this cra crazy historic times of all these, pretty much everything changing. EXP is obviously the way forward for real estate brokerage. So whether you're an agent or whether you're a broker, do consider reaching out. So text the word EXP to 31996. Or if you're ready to join and you haven't chosen a sponsor, just text me directly at 512-758-0206. So in the meantime, guys, you have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you on the show anytime. Thanks for continuing to make this the number one listen to daily podcast for agents in the nation. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, Thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com. <laughs>